Hello and uh, welcome back to the uh, United Nations Climate Talks here in Tianjin, China. I'm delighted to say that we've been joined by Kate Dooley of uh, FERN, which is a uh, Belgian organisation which specialises in uh, uh, climate change and forests. And um, I'm hoping that uh, Kate is going to uh, explain some of the uh, uh, kind of technical details and, and make it accessible to people uh, when it comes to uh, uh, forestry in developing countries. So. Um, Kate, we've been hearing a lot about a set of policies called RED, um, which are, are supposed to help uh, stop deforestation in, in the developing world. So maybe the, the first place to start is by asking, what is RED? <laughs> okay, sure. Thanks. Um, well, what's happened here over the last few years in the negotiations is it's really come the issue of forests and forest destruction, particularly um, tropical forests in developing countries, has really come to the forefront because 20% um, of global greenhouse gas emissions come from deforestation, or up to 20% are the estimates. So for that reason, um, there's been a lot of debate and discussion about, well, if we're going to stop climate change, well, that will part of the solution will have to be stopping deforestation in the tropics. And that's gained a lot of support um, from, from countries, from almost all parties, and also from, from the public, from NGOs, from environmentalists, from everybody. Because obviously, whilst the climate crisis is, is the most um, the biggest crisis humanity has ever faced, the loss of tropical forests and the pace we're losing them at is, is also a huge, um, is a huge crisis and disaster. The loss of biodiversity, forests are home to um, 1.6 billion indigenous peoples, so people live in forest. They're the richest source of biodiversity on the planet, so we really need to keep the forests as well as reducing emissions to save climate change. Okay, so we can we can see that it's an important issue, and, and red is a set of policies that's designed to, to help solve the issue. So why are we still talking about it? Why isn't there an agreement here? Okay, so um, the acronym RED, I mean a lot of the answer to that lies actually in the name of RED. So RED stands for reducing emissions from deforestation and forest de degradation. And that's what's being discussed here in the negotiations. Um, so and the basic concept behind it is that developing countries, um, tropical forested nations who are experiencing great rates of forest loss, would be paid um, from the north, from developed countries, sort of compensated if you like, to um, slow down their deforestation rates. So we would pay, so the North would pay them to um, not, not destroy their forests and sell them. So the idea is putting a value on forests. But if we go back to the name RED, reduced emissions from deforestation, and because we're here in the climate convention, the focus is really on the emissions. So um, the, pay, the idea of, of making payments is making payments for emission reductions from deforestation, not just reducing deforestation in itself. And that brings with it quite a lot of problems. Okay, well, maybe, maybe an obvious uh, question is what are, what are these problems? Um, I guess uh, some of the language, like to not try and use too much lingo, but a lot of the language that's used here when we talk about RED is um, co-benefits. So if we, if we do reduce emissions from deforestation, if we reward countries to, um, we, we start to reduce that 20% of greenhouse gas emissions that are coming from forests, there'll be co-benefits of um, biodiversity will be saved, um, people's livelihoods, people's homes are in the forest, that will be saved. When the reality is that we really need to turn this picture around because what we need to do is reduce deforestation, which means focusing on what are the drivers to deforestation, reducing that, and a co-benefit would from that would be that we would reduce emissions and that would contribute to climate change. But because it's not, it's not looked at that way around, because of the focus on emissions, um, the, the big issue in because of the focus on emissions, it means that RED is going down a very technical route where countries are basically um, concentrating on how to monitor and measure those emissions and they're not looking at ensuring the biodiversity of the forests are protected and ensuring that the rights of people who live in the forest are respected. And so a lot of people are concerned that RED could actually do quite a lot of harm to what's being called the co-benefits, the biodiversity and the rights of people who live there. Okay, and you mentioned that it's about um, kind of rich, developed countries paying poorer countries not to destroy their forests. Where's this money going to come from? Um, so one of there's quite a few unresolved issues um, in red in the negotiations um, that will be continue being discussed until Copenhagen. But one of them is the source of financing for red. So the debate is between whether whether red should be financed through markets or through funds. And what that essentially means is um, whether governments raise public finance to compensate um, developing countries to reduce their deforestation 
or whether um, markets would mean that um, northern governments actually buy emission reduction credits from from developing countries. So if they manage to reduce their deforestation and can measure how many tons of emissions that saved, then they can sell that to the north as a as a pollution permit, an offset credit, which means that in the north we can um, we can then use that to pollute extra, um, burn extra fossil fuels through coal-fired power stations or through um, through other electricity generation. So what it actually means, if red is funded through markets. Um, that will mean that for every tonne of emissions that are saved from reducing deforestation, we release that tonne of emissions over here. So under that circumstance, it doesn't actually really help contribute to climate change. It's just, um, it raises funds for the North to offset their emissions. Okay, but we've had a, a lot here about you know how the talks aren't progressing enough and uh, how it's very slow, we're going around in circles and uh, I guess red has been one of the areas which uh, some people are highlighting as an area of hope and, and the picture you're painting is, is, <laughs> is quite a, a, a sad one. So um, what, what, what has to give, is there, is there anything that could change in order for, for you to you know, say, okay, well, you know, this could be a, a positive set of policies or, or from the perspective of FERN, your organisation, is this just kind of dead in the water? Okay, um, RED is being put forward quite a lot in the talks as, the, as something that's moving forward um, more than anything else, but that, that's kind of relative to how fast anything's moving forward here. Um, and in Cancun there is a lot of push and a lot of hope from many um, people that, that there'll be some kind of agreement on red or that will somehow be decided or, or moved forward. Um, the reason, one of the reasons um, areas of disagreement in red like I've just said is still around the sources of financing markets and funds and so one of the reasons that um, people are hoping they can resolve this and make an agreement in Cancun is there's a, a discussion about not deciding on the finance source. So we just postpone that and we decide on all the um, everything else about RED, sort of the early phases of it, how would we get started on it. And then we'll discuss financing and take that decision perhaps um, in, in South Africa at the following COP. So um, for my organisation FERN, that's, we don't see that as really a good solution because the financing source defines the whole architecture of RED of how it's set up and what is really key and, and many NGOs here are, are campaigning on this and really um, keep emphasising what really matters in RED to ensure deforestation is reduced is that we tackle the drivers to deforestation which often come from northern consumption from our demand for um, for timber, timber products, agricultural products, soy, palm oil, this is what's driving tropical deforestation. So a red agreement would need to include something that tackled demand in the north. Um, and then the other aspect is that the rights of the people who live in these forests, they must be protected. So red needs to include really strong um, language and ways of ensuring that um, developing countries who are receiving these financial transfers to stop deforestation, make sure that they uphold and respect international obligations for the rights of indigenous peoples. So if those things were ensured in the text or in a red decision, um, it would start to hold the beginnings of something that could be really useful, but ultimately the question of markets and funds has to be decided. And if red is an offset mechanism and enables the North to keep polluting, then it's never going to be a solution to climate change. It's what we'd call a false solution. Okay, so uh, taking that into account, what's the what's the most hopeful outcome you have? It, it doesn't sound like Cancun is going to uh, yield anything that, that your organisation would be able to support. So, um, in South Africa, do you think there's kind of a, are you hopeful that you might might achieve something that, that kind of meets your objectives? Um, well, like I just said, if 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 red is based on carbon offsetting, it's a false solution, and that goes for actually quite a lot of other different areas of the talks here. So um, what could happen that would meet our objectives, I guess, is that governments really start discussing the, the, key, the key issues here in the climate talks, which is how the North, how, developing, how developed countries, the rich industrial countries of the North, are going to reduce their emissions and commit to legally binding um, and ambitious emission reduction targets that actually put us on a path to, to avoiding the worst impacts of climate change. Um, it, so if we can see people, basically people tackling the core of the discussions, which is emission reduction commitments. That, that issue is being skirted around, so there's a potential for things to move in the right direction if they started talking about the right issues. Okay, well I think that's uh, quite a clear message for us to, to finish the discussion with. So uh, Kate, thanks very much for joining us and um, I'll hand back over to our studio in the UK.
Thank you very much. Cheers.